okie dokie. And uh, so we gotta do cell wall, gram negative and gram positive, and how to do your list. You still have to do plasma, okay, so cell wall, plasma membrane, we did fimbria, flagella, capsule, we have to do pilus plasmid, uh, uh, we did uh, nucleoid, Ribosomes, inclusion is extra stored nutrients. If a bacterial cell has nutrients available, he's going to store some up in an inclusion. It's kind of like in my pantry, uh, I have cans of stuff. Just in case there's a hurricane, I got canned pineapple and I even got cans of soup, which even if you have to eat them cold, it's still going to save your damn life. So I had cans of beans and whatever. You go to Publix and they're having a BOGO. Buy one, get one. So you stock up on your canned foods, right? That's what an inclusion is. Extra stored nutrients. It might store fats. It might store carbohydrates. It might even store um, phosphates. What does a cell need phosphates for? <laughs> Making ATP, or maybe it's phospholipid bilayer, but ATP needs phosphates. So if a bacterium can store excess phosphates, that's really good. It'll be able to make more energy. So sometimes bacteria can make an inclusion, which is just extra stored nutrients. It's like your hurricane supply. You know, we've got extra food stored up in case there's a hurricane. Times get bad for the bacteria. There's nutrient depletion in the environment. He's got some backup stored inclusions, nutrients in the inclusion. So I think we covered an endospore. So I think we covered all bacterial structures except for plasmid, pilus, and talk about conjugation, so we gotta do that. And then we gotta do the cell wall, which gets us into bacteria classification. Okay.